I love singing, and I love books, so I'm very happy. My weekends are very exciting, but I enjoy my weekdays too. I'm lucky. I live near the bookstore, and I don't start work until 10 a.m. Every morning I get up at 8, make breakfast, and watch the news on TV. Then I walk to work. I'm very busy all day. I help people find the books they want. At lunchtime, I get a sandwich from the deli, and I often go to the gym. I usually finish work at 5.30 p.m., but on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, I work very late, until 10.30. I never cook after work. I'm too tired. I sometimes like going to the little restaurant near my apartment. Saturday mornings, I go shopping and clean my apartment. I don't eat dinner on Saturday and Sunday evenings because I'm too excited. I like singing, but I'm always nervous before the show. Lisa Parsons is 32 years old and lives in Manhattan. From Monday to Friday, she works at a bookstore in New York. Sometimes she stays at work until 10.30 at night, but Lisa doesn't relax on weekends. On weekends, she has another job. She is a singer. On Saturday afternoons, she practices with her band, and on Saturday and Sunday nights, she goes to nightclubs and sings. She has no free time, but she loves her life. I come from a small town in Minnesota, but I live in Hollywood now, and it's very different. In my hometown, people are very friendly. They walk down the street and they speak to you. They say, hi there, and how are you? Here in Hollywood, people don't walk. They drive everywhere. I live in this big house on Santa Monica, and sometimes I don't see anyone all day. Pamela is a doctor. She's Canadian, but now she lives in a small town near Nairobi, Kenya, in East Africa. She isn't an ordinary doctor. She's a flying doctor. Every day from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., she speaks to people on her radio. Then she flies to help them. She works 16 hours a day nonstop, but she loves her job. She isn't married. She has no free time. Istvan is a music professor. He comes from Budapest in Hungary, but now he lives in the United States. He works four days a week at the University of Texas, Austin, he speaks three languages, Hungarian, English, and German. He's married to an American and has a daughter. He likes playing tennis in his free time. I do the same things every day. I wake up at 7, but I stay in bed until 7.15. Then I get up and have a shower. That really wakes me up. I get dressed and then I have breakfast, some toast and a cup of coffee. I leave the house at 8.30 and walk to the bus stop. I go to work by bus. I start work at about 9 and I finish work at 5 or 6. In the evening, I have dinner and watch television or play on the computer. 
I am usually in bed by 11. I live with my mother and my father and my two brothers. They are called Owen and David. Owen is 20 and he's at university. David is 16 and he's at school, like me. I have two grandmothers and one grandfather. My other grandfather is dead. I have one uncle and one aunt. My aunt Janet is my mother's sister. They have two daughters. Rosa is ten and Gemma is fourteen, like me. They are my cousins. Mike is standing at the top of the stairs. He is reading something. Then he falls down the stairs. His leg hurts a lot. He tells his wife Judy that his leg is killing him. Judy gets ice for him and then she takes him to the hospital. The doctor says that Mike's leg is broken. Mike isn't happy because he has to stay put. He can't go to work for a few days. A woman is coming home late from work because she missed her train. She has a cell phone, so she calls her husband and tells him she is late. He will pick up the kids and have a chicken dinner ready when she gets home. The wife thinks her husband is lucky because he works at home and he can take naps when he gets sleepy. He says that he does the laundry and the dishes because he is home. I'm a carpenter. I work eight hours a day from Monday to Friday. I get up around 6 a.m. and I work from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. I get home pretty early, about 4 p.m. I go to bed at 10. Well, I'm an accountant. It's a regular 9 to 5 office job, so I get up at 7 a.m. and get home around 6 p.m. That's okay, though, because I like to go out at night. I go to bed around midnight on weekdays. Well, my hours are a bit different. I'm a nurse. I start work at 11 at night. I work until 7 a.m. I get home at 8 and go to bed at about 8.30, and I sleep until 4 p.m. Oh, you know, I have dinner, watch TV, see friends. It's a great schedule for me. Tom has to wake up early to go to the airport. But when his roommate wakes him up, he doesn't want to get up. The room is very cold and dark, and he wants to go back to sleep. Tom gets up, but he doesn't have time to take a shower. He gets dressed quickly and goes to the airport. He's lucky because he doesn't miss his plane. Alice and Peter go away for the weekend. They go to the beach. It is winter, so they can't go swimming. But they take walks on the beach, and they get plenty of fresh air. On Friday night, they go dancing, and on Sunday, they go ice skating. They have a good time and are very happy.
the Internet. Can you imagine a day before the Internet? It's history. The Internet started in the 1960s. The United States Department of Defense started it because they wanted a computer network to help the American military. In the 1970s, scientists worked on it and learned how to send messages between computers. Then, in the 1980s, telephone companies made it possible to communicate on the computer network in many more countries. An international computer language was born, and the Internet went worldwide. These days. Now, of course, you can email, listen to music, and shop online. You can Google for information about anything and everything, or just put on your Google glasses. You can book a hotel, a vacation, or movie tickets. You can read a book. You can pay your bills. You can watch your favorite TV program. You can play chess with a partner in China. You can chat with your friends and share photos. You can. The list is endless. Canada through the seasons. The weather is very different in this large country, so there's something to do for everyone in every season. Spring can arrive in February in Victoria on the west coast. In other parts of Canada, it gets warm in early April, and spring weather continues until June. In British Columbia, you can kayak, camp, or take a train trip through the Rocky Mountains. Summer brings warm to hot weather from May to September. This is a great time to fish in one of Canada's many lakes. Kayak among whales in Churchill, Manitoba, or have some Wild West fun at the Calgary Stampede. Fall brings cool temperatures in September and October. It's a good time of year to see the fall leaves in eastern Canada, enjoy hiking, visit museums, or go to the Toronto International Film Festival. Snow begins to fall in November and temperatures drop. Days are short in winter, but you can ski, go to an ice festival, or see the northern lights. In parts of British Columbia, the snow doesn't stay long and you can golf all year. Let's read. All around the world, people like to read books, newspapers, magazines, and comic books. In Japan, reading manga is a really popular free time activity. Manga is a type of comic book. In manga, there are words and pictures to tell a story or give information. There are lots of different types of manga. For example, adventure, mystery, science fiction, and comedy. There is manga for all ages. You can find manga on the internet too. There are also manga computer games and manga cartoons on television. There are even manga cafes where you can look at manga on the internet or read manga books and magazines. Manga started in Japan, but it's now popular in many countries. Some libraries in the USA have manga reading groups. The Great Wall of China
About two thousand four hundred years ago, there were many small countries in China. There were often wars. People didn't want enemies in their country, so they built big walls to keep them out. For more than two thousand years, people built walls, destroyed walls, and built new walls. The Great Wall of China is really many walls. Together, they are about seven thousand kilometers long. The walls are about seven meters high. There are also many taller towers. Prisoners, soldiers, and other people built the wall. They transported the stones and bricks by hand. This work was hard and dangerous. About three million people died building the wall. Later, more than one million soldiers guarded the wall, but it was hard to stop the enemies. People also used the wall as a road. Today, tourists like to walk along the wall. For many years, people thought that you could see the Great Wall of China from the moon, but this is not true. Skyscrapers. When there isn't much ground, we can build tall buildings. Very tall buildings are called skyscrapers. The first skyscraper was the Home Insurance Building. It was built in Chicago, in the USA, in 1885. It was 42 meters tall. The tallest skyscrapers are now much taller than this. The Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia, are the tallest twin buildings. There is a bridge between the two towers called a sky bridge. One of the tallest skyscrapers. Is the Burj Dubai? It's in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. It's eight hundred and eighteen meters tall. That's nearly a kilometer. It's made of a special, strong concrete called reinforced concrete. The Burj Dubai has apartments, shops, swimming pools, hotels. Restaurants and a library. It's like a very tall town. Petra. About two thousand years ago, people in the Middle East. Bought and sold cloth and spices in many countries. They often traveled across land in large groups called caravans. They used camels to transport people and things. One of the places where the caravans stopped was Petra. Petra is a fantastic city in the desert in Jordan. People built the city in the pink cliffs. The caravans stopped in Petra because it had water and places to sleep, and it was safe from enemies. Some of the caravans were seven kilometers long, and they had two thousand five hundred camels. At different times. People from different places lived in Petra. They made wonderful temples, a theater, a palace, and tombs in the pink cliffs. Later, earthquakes destroyed a lot of Petra. 
Today, many tourists visit this amazing place. People also make movies here, for example, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. The Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is in India. It looks like a palace, but it's a tomb. It's one of the most beautiful tombs in the world. There are gardens and fountains around the building. The tomb is made of twenty-eight types of stone and jewel. From all over India and other countries, most of the tomb is made of a beautiful white stone called marble. About twenty thousand people built the Taj Mahal, and it took twenty-two years. More than a thousand elephants helped to move the stones for the building. The Taj Mahal was built about four hundred years ago. The Emperor Shah Jahan built it for his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. She died when she had her fourteenth baby. Shah Jahan was very sad, so he built the Taj Mahal to remember his wife. Later. Shah Jahan's son wanted to be the emperor, so he put his father into prison. When Shah Jahan died, people put his body in the Taj Mahal, so that he was with his wife forever. The Colosseum. Where did ancient Romans go for fun? They went to the Colosseum in Rome. They watched fights in this big and beautiful stadium. The fights were with gladiators and wild animals like lions, crocodiles, rhinos, and even elephants. The Colosseum wasn't fun for everyone. About five hundred thousand people. And one million wild animals died there. About two thousand years ago, Rome was a very important city. The Colosseum was the most fantastic building in the city. It was big enough for more than fifty thousand people. The Colosseum had many arches. There were about eighty big arches to let people in and out. There was also a cloth roof to protect people from sun and rain. Later, two earthquakes destroyed some of the Colosseum. Then people took stones from the Colosseum to build many other buildings in Rome. So the building that we can see today. Gives only an idea of how beautiful it was in the past. Thousands of tourists visit the Colosseum every year. Free time is very important. It's good for you to do something different after school or work. It's also fun. Many of our favorite free time activities are popular all around the world. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world, and it's a big part of life in Brazil. People here love to watch and play soccer in their free time. In Brazil, you don't need a pitch or expensive boots to play soccer. People play soccer in the street and on the beach. Children often play with no boots. Some people think that Brazilians are good at soccer 
because they learn a special way to play when they are children. They learn to play a type of soccer called futsal. There are five players in each team. The ball is small, but it's full of sand, so it's very heavy. Futsal started in South America, but now it's popular in many other countries. One evening at a restaurant, a man and woman were shocked by a child's behavior. The little boy was out of control, running around while his parents didn't have a clue that he was causing trouble. They were just enjoying their dinner. The other couple was upset because they had gone through the trouble of getting a babysitter for their own kids. They just wanted an evening out so they could relax and have dinner in peace. They were also upset because the restaurant was noisy and it was taking forever to get their food. They told the waitress that the bottom line was that parents had to keep their kids under control and teach them how to behave in public. I think I'm really in hot water with my teacher. She wrote a note on my paper that she wants to see me in her office tomorrow. I think I know why. I worked really hard on my last paper, but right before I had to hand it in, I got busy and I copied something from the internet. Just a small thing, maybe a few paragraphs. I didn't think she'd know. I can't believe it. I'm so scared. What will she do to me? I hope I don't get an F. What if she tells my parents? I'll be in really hot water with them, too. I promise to never copy again. I hope they'll believe me. It's a big problem, and we need to solve it. But don't worry, we're working on it. Too many people are living on the streets. We're trying to help them. We're finding them places to live and helping them get jobs. And, of course, we have people helping them with their drug and alcohol problems. Please know that we're doing all we can. We're working on this day and night. It's true that I didn't work very hard, and that's why my grades were so bad. But I've changed. Right now, I'm working on two papers, and I know I'm doing a good job. And I had a big test last week, and do you know how long I studied? Six hours a day for three days. Really? Believe me, this time I'm going to get all A's. Don't worry. Hi, I'm Alice. I'm doing some internet research on wedding customs in four different countries. I already found out a lot about customs in India, but I need to find out more about customs in Ethiopia, Japan, and Peru. Hi, remember me? I'm Alice. I just wanted to let you know that I found a great website with information about wedding customs in Japan. If you want me to email you the address, just let me know. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm in Alice's class, and I have the same assignment. At first, I didn't know what topic to do research on but I found Alice in the library and talked to her. She gave me some good ideas to think about. I'll let you know tomorrow what I decide to do research on. Hi there. I finally made my decision. Sorry you had to wait, but I wanted to be sure I picked the right research topic. As you know, 
Yesterday, I talked to Alice about a few possible topics. And then I got online and looked at a few websites. First, I found out what I don't want to do research on. And that's classical music, because I already know a lot about that. Well, after looking at a lot of websites, I decided to do research on the history of jazz, because I don't know anything about that. Tutankhamun's Treasures Tutankhamun was a king in Egypt more than 3,300 years ago. He died when he was only 19 years old. When he died, people put a gold mask over his face. They put his body in a coffin made of gold. Then they put the coffin into two bigger coffins. They put all three coffins in a tomb with food and many treasures. The Egyptians thought that the king needed these things after he died. Tutankhamun's tomb was in the Valley of the Kings. No one discovered it for a long, long time. Then a British archaeologist called Howard Carter discovered it in 1922. When he broke through the door, he was amazed. There were gold statues, boats, jewels, toys, masks, and even a gold bed. There were about 3,500 treasures. For ten years, Carter took the treasures from the tomb and wrote about them. Tutankhamun became one of the most famous kings in the world. Today, many of his wonderful treasures are in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, in Egypt. Structures in Space There are also structures in space. The International Space Station, ISS, is a research station. It's about 350 kilometers above Earth. It goes around Earth about 16 times every day. It travels at 27,700 kilometers per hour. That's nearly 8 kilometers per second. You can see the ISS from Earth without a telescope. The ISS is made of metal. It uses energy from the sun. The first part of the ISS went into space in a rocket in 1998. No astronauts went with it. Most other parts went with astronauts. Sometimes, astronauts do a spacewalk outside the ISS to attach new parts. Families and Friends Eid is the Arabic word for festival. Eid is a big Muslim festival. At Eid, people give presents to children and friends. Eid presents are usually money, or things like toys, candy, and new clothes. At Eid, Muslims think about other people in the world. They give food and money to hungry people and sick people. People wear new clothes at Eid. In the morning, they get up, wash, and put on their new clothes. 
They eat dates and cookies for breakfast. Then they go to pray at the mosque. Lots of people hug their friends. Later, they eat with their family. They also visit their grandparents and say, Happy Eid. Midsummer. In June, it's summer in Europe. It's usually warm. The nights are short and the days are long. The longest day in the year is June 21st. It's called Midsummer. At this time, there are many festivals in Europe. People make big bonfires. In Finland and other countries near the Arctic, it doesn't get dark at midsummer. There's no night. In Russia at midsummer, people sing and dance all night. Girls pick flowers and make pretty crowns. They throw the crowns into a lake or a river. Midsummer is one of the biggest festivals in Sweden. People decorate their homes with leaves. They make a big pole with flowers and leaves. They dance around the pole and sing songs. They wear traditional Swedish costumes. Girls make pretty crowns with flowers. The Water Cycle Do you know where water comes from? When it rains, water falls from the sky. This is called precipitation. Rainwater goes into streams. Stream water goes into rivers. River water goes into seas and oceans. When it's sunny, the ocean water gets warm. Some water goes up into the sky. This is called evaporation. The water in the sky makes clouds. Then it rains again. This is called the water cycle. We're lucky to have water in our homes. About one billion people don't have clean water in their homes. Most of the water we use comes from rivers and reservoirs. Clean water goes through pipes to our homes. Water is all around us. We have liquid water in rivers and oceans. We have frozen water in ice and glaciers. And we have water vapor in clouds and steam. Water is very important. About 70% of Earth is covered with water. Most of the water is in the oceans. There are five oceans. The Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. The largest ocean is the Pacific Ocean. It's 156 million square kilometers. It's about 15 times bigger than the USA. There are also many seas on Earth. The largest sea is the South China Sea. It's three million square kilometers. One of the smallest seas is the Marmara Sea. 
It's only about 11,000 square kilometers. All the water in the oceans and seas is salt water. The Dead Sea is about 30% salt. It's the saltiest sea on Earth. It's so salty, you can float in it. Fresh water. About 3% of the water on Earth is fresh water. Most of this fresh water is frozen. It's ice. It's in glaciers or polar ice caps. Some of the fresh water is in lakes and rivers. One of the biggest lakes on Earth is Lake Superior in North America. It's about 82,000 square kilometers. The longest river on Earth is the River Nile in Africa. It's about 6,700 kilometers long. Some of the fresh water is in the sky. It's in the clouds and the rain. Some of the water is in the soil, in rocks, or under the ground in caves. Most of Earth is covered with water, but only about 1% is fresh water that we can drink. The rest is salt water or ice. Save water. When there is no water, rivers and lakes become dry. Plants can't grow, and animals can't drink. If there is no food and no water to drink, people die too. Water is very important. We all need to save water. You can save water at home. Turn off the water when you brush your teeth. Take a shower, not a bath. You can also save water outside the home. Collect rainwater to water plants. Don't throw things into rivers or lakes. People and animals need clean water, not dirty water. Remember, our Earth needs water. People, animals, and plants need water. Save our wonderful water. Floods can happen when there is too much rain. Rivers and lakes become very full. Floods can also happen when there are very big waves in the ocean. Where there are floods, the water covers roads and paths. Cars and people can't get out of the area. The water goes into houses, and people have to leave their homes. Sometimes they have to get on the roof of their house to wait for help. Cars and people can't get into the area to help. The police and firefighters rescue people with boats and helicopters. Floods can be very dangerous. The water moves fast and it's very strong. Don't play in flood water. We need water. The human body contains lots of water. Our body is about 70% water. Our brain is about 85% water. And our bones are about 33% water. 
water is very important for the human body. We can live for four weeks without food, but we can't live for more than about three days without water. We need to drink about eight glasses of water every day. We need to drink even more water when we play sports and when it's hot. We need water because it keeps our blood healthy. Our blood is about 50% water. Blood takes food to different parts of our body. It takes oxygen from our lungs to other parts of our body, too. If we don't drink water, our body gets dehydrated. If we're dehydrated, our kidneys and our brain don't work. Then we get very sick. Your muscles. What helps your bones and joints to walk, run, dance, and jump? Muscles. Muscles pull your bones to move your body. Muscles in your legs help you to ride a bicycle. Muscles in your arms help you to row a boat. There are more than 600 muscles in your body. Running, swimming, dancing, and riding a bicycle are types of exercise. Exercise makes your muscles, bones, and joints strong. Your heart is a type of muscle. Exercise makes your heart strong, too. Protect your body. Do exercise every day. What is your favorite type of exercise? your nose and mouth. You breathe through your nose and mouth. Your nose and mouth take air into your body. You breathe about 15 times every minute. After exercise, people breathe fast. They can breathe 40 times every minute. Your nose helps you to smell things. Your mouth helps you to talk and eat. Your teeth bite food so you can eat it. Your body uses food to live and grow. Protect your teeth. Brush your teeth after breakfast and after dinner. And don't eat lots of candy. Your eyes and ears. Your eyes help you to see the world around you. They open and close many times every day. This is called blinking. When your eyes blink, they wash dirt out of your eyes. 
At night, your eyes close so you can sleep. Eyes blink about fifteen times every minute. Your ears help you to listen to music. They help you to listen for cars in the street. Your ears can hear things when you sleep, too. Protect your eyes and ears. On sunny days, wear sunglasses to protect your eyes. Don't listen to very loud music. It's bad for your ears. Your brain. Do you know how you read these words? Your brain tells you what your eyes see. Your brain tells you what you see, hear, and touch. It tells your muscles when to move. It helps you to write, speak, draw, and do puzzles. Your brain is amazing. Your brain works all day and at night when you sleep. At night, it makes you breathe and it makes your heart work. At night, your brain helps you to remember things that you learn in the day. Protect your brain. Wear a helmet. When you ride a bicycle, protect your body. Your body is amazing. It helps you to walk, work, and play. It helps you to eat, read, listen, and learn. It's important to protect your body. You have skin everywhere on your body. Your skin. Helps you to touch things. It helps you to know when things are hot or cold. Skin stops dirt getting into your body. It stops water getting into your body when it's rainy and when you swim. Hair grows out of your skin. Hair on your arms and legs stands up when you're cold. This stops your body getting too cold. Your skin makes sweat when you're hot. This stops your body getting too hot. Protect your body. Your bones. There are bones under your skin. These bones make your skeleton. Your skeleton helps you to stand up. 
There are joints in your skeleton too. Bones meet at joints. Elbows and knees are joints. Joints help you to move. Knee joints help you to jump and kick. A baby has small bones. Bones grow and they make you big and tall. Your bones stop growing when you are about 20 years old. Then there are 206 bones in your body. Protect your bones. When you ride a skateboard, wear pads to protect your bones and joints. Wear a helmet to protect your head, too. Let's go to school. There are schools all around the world. There are big schools and little schools, new schools and old schools. All around the world, students go to school. Some students walk to school and some go by bus or by train. Some students go by bicycle, and some go by car. These students are in the USA. They go to school by bus. In the snow in Canada, some students go to school by sled. In India, some students go to school by rickshaw. Protect your body. Eat food that's good for you. Good food helps your bones to grow. It makes you strong, and it stops you getting sick. There's lots of water in your body. You lose water when you go to the toilet and when your body makes sweat. Drink water every day to protect your body. Go to the doctor when you get sick, and go to the dentist every year. Do exercise every day. It's good to do exercise, and it makes you happy. It's good to sleep when you are tired, too. It's important to protect your body. Food for Life Everyone needs food to live. It gives you energy to work and play. It also gives you nutrients to grow well and stay healthy. Do you eat a balanced diet with lots of different nutrients? Your body needs proteins to build muscles. Proteins are also important for healthy hair and fingernails. You can get lots of proteins from meat, fish, and eggs. 
Dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt also contain proteins. Many people don't eat animal products, but they can get proteins from plant products. Pulses, like beans and lentils, are rich in proteins. Many grains, nuts, and seeds have proteins too. Which of these foods do you eat? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates give your body energy. You can get carbohydrates from grain products like rice, bread, and pasta. Your body digests these foods slowly, so they give you energy for many hours. Some vegetables, like potatoes, also have lots of carbohydrates. What grains and vegetables do you eat? Sugar is also a carbohydrate. Your body digests sugar quickly, so it gives you energy right away. Don't eat too many sweet foods like candy or ice cream, and remember that you can also get sugar from naturally sweet foods. Have a bowl of fruit with a little honey. Fats. You need to eat some fats to grow well and stay healthy. Your body also stores fats for extra energy and to keep you warm in winter. Some types of meat and fish have a lot of fats. Dairy products like butter and cheese have fats too. You can also get fats from plant products like nuts, seeds, and vegetable oils. Be careful. Too many fats can make you fat. Vitamins. Your body needs vitamins to stay healthy and fight diseases. Vitamin A keeps your skin healthy. You can get vitamin A from orange fruits and vegetables like carrots or pumpkins. Dark green vegetables like spinach have lots of vitamin A too. Dairy products give you vitamin B for healthy blood. You can also get vitamin B from meat, fish, and eggs. Vitamin C helps your body fight diseases. You can get vitamin C from citrus fruits like oranges and lemons. Minerals. Your body also needs minerals. You need calcium for strong bones and healthy teeth. Dairy products like milk and yogurt are good sources of calcium. You also need iron for healthy blood. You can get iron from red meat and eggs, or from vegetables like broccoli and spinach. Salt is also an important mineral, but be careful. Too much salty food is bad for you. Too much waste. In some countries, one person can make about five kilograms of waste every day. Where does all this waste go? Most waste goes to a landfill. At a landfill, people put the waste under the ground.
Landfills are very big because we make so much waste. Most waste materials decompose. They break down into very small pieces. Food waste decomposes fast, but some waste materials decompose slowly. Paper materials take from two to five months to decompose. Some metal materials take from 80 to 100 years, and plastic materials take maybe up to 1,000 years. Some materials, like glass, never decompose. We are making more and more waste. We need more landfills, but there's no more land on Earth for landfills. Our waste stays in landfills for too long, and this is bad for Earth. So we should make less waste. We should recycle more things. Around the world, people make up to 4 billion metric tons of waste every year. Stop germs. Do you get sick? Germs are things that can make you sick. Germs can get in your body when you breathe and when you eat. Germs can get in your mouth from your fingers, too. Some germs get in your body when you get a cut in your skin. Wash your hands with soap and water to get germs off your fingers. Wash your hands when it's time to eat, after you go to the toilet, after you touch animals, and after you play outside. Stop germs. There are germs in a sneeze. Catch sneezes in a tissue. Then throw the tissue in a wastebasket. Maya. I volunteer three times a week after school. I go to an elementary school in an underdeveloped neighborhood and help students with their homework. They don't have private tutors, and their parents are usually busy working. The kids look up to me and ask me for advice. I try to set a good example, and I encourage them to study hard. Roberto. When I think about things, I try not to think too much about the negative side of things. I try to focus on the positive. I think things will work out for the best, and they usually do. Some of my friends are just the opposite, and that can be hard on me sometimes. I guess I prefer to be around people who also focus more on the positive. But I get that not everyone is the same. The sun is a star. It's very, very hot. The sun has lots of heat and light. Heat and light from the sun come to Earth. The heat and light make Earth warm, so we can live here. Light from the sun comes to Earth in eight minutes. 
Some places are warm and sunny all year, and they have no seasons. Some places have seasons. In summer, there's more light from the sun, so it's warm. In winter, there's less light from the sun, so it's cold. Is it warm and sunny where you live? Bernadette. I'm the type of person who tries to fix things. If I see something wrong, I try to make it right. It drives me crazy when I see a problem and no one is doing anything about it. It's better to fix problems right away. I think this is a good quality to have. I just started a new job and my boss seems really pleased with my work so far. Some people just accept a problem, but it doesn't have to be that way. It always feels satisfying when I can solve something. Young Ho. My sister is a real people person, but I'm just the opposite. I prefer to do things on my own more. I like people, of course, but I also really enjoy my own time. I read a lot, go for walks by myself, things like that. I have friends, and we have a lot of fun together, but I guess I prefer being on my own. Some people think that's a bad thing, but I don't think so. What is Earth? Let's look at Earth. Let's look at oceans and rivers, mountains and forests. Earth is amazing, and it has lots of amazing places. We're in space, and we're looking at Earth. What can we see? We can see many colors. We can see land, water, and clouds. Earth is a planet. There are many, many planets in space, but there's only one planet. Earth. Earth is our home. Millions of plants, animals, and people live here. On the land, there are forests, mountains, and deserts. Most of Earth's water is in oceans, but there's water in lakes and rivers too. Earth goes around the sun every year. Earth also turns every day. Jobs. What is a job? A job. Is the work that you do. A teacher does a job. A bus driver does a job too. Most people do jobs for money, but not all jobs are for money. Some jobs are inside. These people are working in an office. They are using telephones and computers. 
Some jobs are outside. These people are making a new road. They have orange clothes so other people can see them. Some people work in the same place every day. Some people go to lots of places. Flight attendants work on planes. They help the passengers. Flight attendants wear a uniform so passengers can find them. Firefighters wear a uniform to protect their body. They can go into very, very hot buildings. Human Rights Hero. Do you know what human rights are? They are basic rights. They include things like the right to vote and free speech. Many people believe that everyone should have these rights. They are important. Everyone needs fair treatment. Rights must become laws. This way, everyone can understand and clearly follow them. This keeps social order and peace. Sometimes people think about rights in opposite ways. People have to struggle for rights when they can't agree. Human rights activists are people who struggle for rights. One of the most well-known activists is Martin Luther King Jr. Why is he well known? King died struggling for the cause of human rights. He led peaceful struggles for human rights in the U.S. in the 1960s. People who disagreed with King abused him. They called him names and threw things at him. He peacefully continued the struggle. The government eventually changed its laws. All people got equal rights. King's story gives people around the world hope. King's dream lives on with those people. They struggle for rights where they live. Homeschooling. Homeschooling is a choice made by some parents to provide education to their children in their own homes. It's popular in the United States, and it is becoming more popular in the United Kingdom, Australia, South Africa, and Japan. There are several advantages to homeschooling. For example, parents choose what their children learn, because parents can teach their children one-on-one. -on -one, They often understand the curriculum better and more quickly too. On the other hand, if their children need more time to learn something, parents can work with them at a slower pace. Parents also like to spend more time together as a family, and children feel safe at home. A safe environment often leads to better learning. There are disadvantages as well. Homeschooled students often feel lonely because they don't spend as much time with other kids their age. They don't get to talk with classmates about things like parents and homework. Parents also feel lonely because they must spend time teaching children and don't get to talk with other adults at work. In addition, homeschooled students sometimes cannot play school sports. Or participate in other activities and programs available to people in a school. Only you can decide if homeschooling is right for you and your family. Take the time to do the research and consider the pros and cons. Electricity.
Electricity is a type of energy. Energy makes things work. We use electricity to make machines work. We use electric machines in our homes, schools, and offices. We can use electricity in trains, cars, and some buses too. Electric machines help us to do many things in the kitchen. We use a kettle to make water hot. We use a refrigerator to keep our food cold. And we use a stove to cook our food. We use a washing machine to wash our clothes. And we use a dishwasher to wash our dishes. Electricity in Nature There's electricity in nature. In the Arctic and the Antarctic, electricity from the sun makes red and green colors in the sky. The colors are amazing. Lightning is a type of electricity in the sky, too. Lightning has lots of energy. It's very, very hot. When you see lightning in the sky, go into your home. Lightning can give you an electric shock. That's when electricity goes into your body. Then, it can kill you. How we make electricity. We make electricity in power stations. We use this electricity to make machines work. Many power stations use coal to make electricity. We burn the coal to make water hot. Hot water makes steam. The steam turns a turbine. The turbine turns a generator. Then the generator makes electricity. Some power stations don't use coal. This power station uses water from a river. The water in the river turns turbines. We can use wind to make electricity, too. This is a wind farm. The wind turns turbines to make electricity. I have this friend named Jonathan. He's been a close friend for a long time. Last month, I asked to borrow some money from him. It wasn't a lot, and I said I'd pay him back in a week. A week went by, and I didn't have the money, so I said I'd pay the following week. He got all upset with me and said he needed the money right away. I mean, it's only another week, so I don't know what the big deal is. I managed to get the money together, and I just paid him. He didn't say thank you or anything, and I'm now afraid I may have lost his friendship over this. I have a lot of friends, or at least I thought I did. But I now see some of these friends more as acquaintances. Let me explain. Last month, I was in a car accident. It wasn't very serious, 
but I did have to spend some time in the hospital. It was hard because I missed classes and was behind on my homework. The strange thing is, only three of my friends came to visit me, and no one else called or sent cards. Nothing. It kind of hurt my feelings. What is interesting is that it's helped me realize who my true friends are. I thought I had more close friends, but I see now that's not the case. That's fine with me, actually. What's important to me is to have a few really close, good friends. My friend Casey is probably my best friend. She's honest, reliable, and truthful. All qualities that are important for me in a friendship. Well, the other day I was telling her about my sister. My sister was mad at me because I didn't remember her birthday. I told my sister she was acting silly, and now she is hardly talking to me. Well, I was telling this to Casey, and she thought I was wrong. She really made me see that I was being insensitive, and my behavior wasn't very nice. That's what I like about Casey. She can help me see things that I wouldn't normally see. My travel journal. September thirteen. I arrived in New York City two weeks ago. I am writing this journal for one of my classes. My teacher says it is a good way for me to practice writing in English. And to write about my experiences here in the United States. So far, I like New York and my school. I have three classes a day. Most of my classmates come from Japan, Korea, Poland, Germany, and Brazil. There aren't many Italian students, so I have to use English most of the time. I am learning a lot. I am living in student housing, and I have my own comfortable room. October twenty. My English is hopeless. I was on the bus this morning, and a man spoke to me, but I hardly understood him. I was so embarrassed. Why is my English improving so slowly? I want to make lots of American friends, but this isn't happening so easily. I feel shy, and it is hard for me to talk to people, even my classmates. I like them, but sometimes I can't understand them very well. I'm feeling homesick. I miss my friends and family. October twenty-seven. I went to a school party last Friday, and it was awesome. I talked with a Japanese man named Kenji, and a Polish woman named Anna. We talked about our country's customs. And our experiences in the states so far. We are going to walk around the city together this weekend. Also, Kenji wants me to write for the student newspaper here at school. Maybe things are getting better. Stop. Pollution. Many power stations burn coal to make electricity. This makes pollution. 
What can we do to stop pollution? We can turn off lamps, computers, and other machines when we are not using them. We can have a shower, not a bath. We can get electricity from power stations that make electricity with wind or water. These power stations don't make pollution. We can also use the sun to make electricity. Solar panels use energy from the sun to make electricity. Solar panels don't make pollution. Batteries. Some machines get electricity from batteries. We put batteries into lots of machines to make them work. Calculators, cameras, cell phones, and watches get electricity from batteries. We can take these machines with us when we move. Most batteries are small. They make electricity for small machines. Some machines use two or more batteries to work. Big batteries make electricity for big machines. A car battery helps a car to work. Some satellites have batteries too. Giant batteries make some satellites work. Do you have machines that use batteries? Be safe. How can you be safe with electricity? Don't put electric machines next to water. Electricity can move through water to you. Firefighters don't use water to stop electric machines burning. They use powder to stop the fire. It isn't safe to put your fingers in sockets or electric machines. Electricity can move from the socket or the machine to you. It can give you an electric shock. Remember to be safe with electricity. Electricity helps us to do many things every day and every night. Electricity is amazing. Cell phone etiquette. The first point I'd like to address is when not to use your phone. It's polite to switch off your phone or turn off the sound when you're in class or in a meeting. If you get an important call, you should ask for permission to leave the room, and then don't talk for too long. Furthermore, for conversations that need more time, it is best to ask the person to call back at a more convenient time. Cell phones can also cause you to neglect the people you are with. I find it really annoying when my friends constantly check their messages on their phone. In fact, I want to tell them to turn off the cell phone and enjoy my company. Another point that needs to be made has to do with personal space. I think it is very impolite to make calls in small spaces or crowded rooms. This makes others uncomfortable and forces them to listen to your personal conversations. Additionally, it disturbs other face-to-face -face conversations. That's why I never use my cell phone within a few meters of other people, except in emergencies. Lastly, I would like readers to pay attention to the dangers of using your phone while doing something else.
For instance, driving and texting is a bad combination. Likewise, using your phone or texting when walking can make you careless. You don't want to get hit by a car. Pay attention to where you're going. Listen and practice. The Socratic Method It's good that we can all choose what kinds of mass media to use. We can enjoy news programs, movies, songs, and other media that we like. But what if someone wants to change something you like? What if they want to ban it? What if you disagree with things other people like? How would you debate these issues? In ancient Greece, there was an intelligent philosopher named Socrates. He thought about the best ways to debate ideas. He created a system of discussion called the Socratic Method. It's one of the best ways to debate an idea. It's done by asking and answering challenging questions about an idea. This helps us to understand why people have certain ideas. People can confirm or change their beliefs after a rigorous debate. This is useful for questions that don't have a correct answer. Some questions have a definite correct answer. For example, what is 1 plus 1? The correct answer is 2. That's not debatable. These questions usually come from science and math. However, social questions often don't have a correct answer. They only have better and worse answers. For example, what is appropriate music for children? It's up to people to think, discuss, debate, and decide for themselves. The Socratic method is one of the best ways to do that. Listen and practice. Lila Martin goes to nice restaurants, eats cake, listens to bands, and gets paid for it. Lila is a wedding planner. She chooses the place, the food, and the music for people's weddings. It's stressful because everything needs to be perfect. Listen and practice. Hal Garner has his dream job. He plays video games all day long. Hal is a game designer for a large video game company. He makes new games and tests them. It's always exciting, and he almost always wins. Listen and practice. Junko Watanabe has a sweet life. She makes bread, cookies, and cakes in her neighborhood bakery. Junko really likes her job. Her salary isn't great, but the customers love her cakes and cookies, so she's happy. Listen and practice. What is an island? An island is a piece of land with water all around it. There are many different types of island. An island can be very small, or it can be big, with mountains, lakes, roads, and cities. Some islands are hot but others are covered with ice. Some islands have animals and plants that don't live anywhere else. Only about 10% of people 
live on islands. Less than 30% of Earth's surface is land. There are seven continents and thousands of islands. Some islands are in the middle of an ocean, and others are near the mainland. Many islands are so small that you can't see them on this map. Listen and practice. Using resources carefully. On our planet, Earth, there are many beautiful places. Sadly, some of the things that people do are damaging our planet. We must care for it to keep it safe and clean for all the plants, animals, and people living here. Our planet gives us many natural resources, like air to breathe and water to drink. It gives us plants and animals to eat, and coal and oil to make electricity. We need to use all these resources carefully. Some natural resources, like water, sun, wind, soil, animals, and plants, can replace themselves naturally. They are called renewable resources. They will not run out if we don't use them too quickly. If we use them carefully, we will have lots of these resources to use for a long time. We all need water. Water is one of the most important natural resources on Earth. We need fresh water to drink, and we need it to grow and cook food and to wash. Plants, animals, and people all need water to live. About 70% of Earth is covered with water, but most of this water is salt water in oceans. People need fresh water to drink, but only about 3% of Earth's water is fresh water. In some countries, there isn't enough water. Sometimes, people have to travel a long way to collect water or they move to a new place where there is water. Non-renewable resources. We use fossil fuels like coal, gas, and oil in power stations to make electricity. We use electricity to power lights. Refrigerators, televisions, and computers all need electricity, too. Many people use electricity to cook and to heat their homes. We also use electricity to power some vehicles, and we use oil to make gasoline to power cars and other vehicles. The problem is that these fossil fuels cannot be replaced, so when we have used them all, they will run out. They are called non-renewable resources, and we are using them too quickly. In 2007, the four countries that used the most electricity were the USA, China, Russia, and Japan. Countries with more people need more electricity. Pollution
Sometimes we make our resources dirty. This is called pollution. We pollute the air when we use fossil fuels to make energy, like electricity. We pollute water when we put waste into it. People, animals, and plants all need clean air and water. There are lots of ways we can help. We must keep water clean, and we must not waste it. Some charities are helping people to collect and store water. They are also building new dams, wells, and pumps so that people can have clean water nearer their homes. We must use non renewable resources carefully, and we must not waste them. Listen and practice. Caring for others. All around the world, people help each other. Many people, like doctors and teachers, have jobs that help others. They are paid money for their work. Lots of people give their time freely to do work to help others. They are called volunteers. It's wonderful to care for a sick child who needs help. It's amazing to save someone's life. Many people do jobs that care for others. Workers like doctors and nurses are very important. They help people to stay healthy, and they care for people who are sick. Doctors often work in clinics or hospitals, and they find out why people are sick and help them to get better. Some doctors, called surgeons, do difficult operations. Nurses work with doctors. They give medication and care for sick people and their families. In some schools, there's a nurse to help children who are sick or who have an accident. Listen and practice. Helping people through life. The people who bring babies into the world are called midwives. They also help the baby, mother, and father to be well in hospital or at home. Children and adults get help from doctors and nurses in schools, clinics, and hospitals. They can have vaccinations and they can learn about being healthy. They can also go to the dentist to care for their teeth and mouth. Every year, about 130 million babies are born around the world. That's about 250 babies every minute of every day. Listen and practice. Helping people through life. The people who bring babies into the world are called midwives. They also help the baby, mother, and father to be well in hospital or at home. Children and adults get help from doctors and nurses in schools, clinics, and hospitals. They can have vaccinations and they can learn about being healthy. They can also go to the dentist to care for their teeth and mouth. Every year, about 130 million babies are born around the world. That's about 250 babies every minute of every day. Listen and practice. It's important to stay healthy. We should care for our body from when we are young to when we are old. If we eat well and walk or do sport, 
we probably won't get sick very often. We can help ourselves to stay healthy. Others can help us too, if we are sick or disabled, or if we have an accident. When people are old, sick, or disabled, they often need help with cooking, cleaning, shopping, washing clothes, and taking medication. They can get help at home from other people in the family or from care workers. Sometimes they have to live in a care home. Listen and practice. My father is a doctor. He works in a hospital for children in Paris. He works very hard, but he loves his job. He's a very kind person. I miss him a lot because I live in England. But when he comes home, he always brings me something nice. I love my grandmother very much. She doesn't get angry with me like my parents do sometimes. And she always wants to listen to what I say. She is 74 years old and lives with my aunt and uncle in the same town as me. I see her every weekend. My brother is four years younger than me, but he goes to the same school as me. He has blonde hair and is quite small for his age. I have a notice on my door at home that says, Private, but he comes in without knocking. So annoying. But he is very funny sometimes too. Uncle Harry is an actor. He's often on TV. He lives in London, but he often comes to see us. He's my mother's brother, and he's an interesting person. I like to talk to him about films and TV programmes. He's a wonderful storyteller. Listen and practice. Studying abroad. Every year, thousands of students choose to study abroad, whether it's for six months, a year, or even longer. Many people find the experience of studying abroad very exciting, but also very scary. Living in another country will help you learn a language and learn about another culture. You will see the world in a new way and learn more about yourself. Studying abroad is also excellent training for the working world. Many companies want employees who speak a second language or who have experience living or working in another country. To choose the right country or school, ask yourself these questions. For how long do I want to study abroad? Do I want to live with a host family, with roommates, or alone? How much can I afford to pay? Based on our experience, it's best to get your passport and visa early. Before you go, learn as much of the language as you can and read about the customs of your host country. Also, talk with people who have experience studying abroad. And call the school to make sure someone can meet you when you get there. Make sure to bring some local money and a credit card. Be curious and open to meeting new people and having new experiences. Don't expect to always be comfortable. After the first few weeks, it's usual to feel a little homesick. You'll miss your family and friends. Remember that it takes time to get used to a new place with new customs. Talk to your new friends and write about your feelings. Listen and practice. This really happened to me. I was about 10 years old and was camping with my best friend. It was late at night, and we were in our tents reading comic books with our flashlights and just talking. 
Suddenly, we heard this strange noise outside our tent. It sounded like an animal, maybe a bear or something. It was big. I know that for sure. It was growling. It was making sounds like grrr. It was moving all around our tent and pushing against the sides. We had all our food in the tent, so we thought it was hungry. We didn't know what to do. We were pretty frightened, to be honest. My friend wanted to feed it. He wanted to open the tent door and throw our food out. I didn't want to open the door. I just wanted to make a lot of noise and try to frighten the animal away. Well, we started making noises, shouting, playing our radio loudly, banging on things, whatever we could do to scare it and make it go away. It seemed to work because we didn't hear anything for a while. Then, suddenly, we heard a voice say, I'm as hungry as a bear. It was my older brother. Listen and practice. How colors make us think and feel. What does the color pink make you think of? How does the color blue make you feel? Why do hospital doctors wear white coats? What color room makes you feel relaxed? Colors affect everyone. Each person may have a different answer to these questions, but we can agree that colors affect everyone. We think carefully about color when we choose our clothes or select paint for a room. But we are often unaware of how color affects us. For example, the color of a room may affect our emotions. Advertisers use color to influence our choices at the supermarket. In addition, we may not realize that colors have many different meanings. Colors in nature have universal meaning. For example, trees and plants are green, so the color green often represents life and nature. Blue, the color of the sky, oceans, and lakes, makes us think of air, water, and peace. Colors in the red spectrum, yellow, orange, and red, are warm colors. Those colors may give us a feeling of warmth and comfort, or feelings of anger. Colors in the blue spectrum, colors such as blue, green, and purple, are cool colors. They often give a feeling of calmness or sadness. These ideas about color are similar around the world. Humans have known about the power of color for a long time. Ancient cultures in China, Egypt, and India used colors to heal sicknesses. People believed that each color had a healing power. For example, people used blue to decrease pain. Even today, some people say that colors can help people feel better. However, Research shows that although colors may change the way a person feels, they cannot heal an illness. Colors also have different meanings in different cultures. A color may represent good feelings in one culture, but bad feelings in another. For example, in the United States, white represents goodness. It is usually the color of a bride's wedding dress. However, in India, China, and Japan, white can mean death. Green is the color of dollar bills in the U.S., so green may make Americans think of money. 
But in China, green can represent a loss of respect. Different colors sometimes represent the same idea in different cultures. In European cultures, purple is the color of royalty for kings and queens. In Asia, yellow is the color of royalty. In addition, one color will have many different meanings within one culture. For example, in North America, red often means stop or danger, but it also can represent love. Color psychology is the study of how colors affect our emotions. Researchers are finding that colors can change our behavior in specific ways. For example, one research study showed that people could lift heavy weights more easily in blue rooms. Other studies have looked at how colors influence decisions. Soccer referees made more decisions against teams that wore black uniforms. Taekwondo referees gave competitors in blue clothing higher scores than competitors in red. In another study, students who saw the color red before a test did much more poorly. Of course, these test results might vary from culture to culture. Most people do not realize how much color affects them. It can affect how people think, feel, and act. Some colors, such as those in nature, can have the same meaning for everyone. Other colors' meanings may be different in different cultures. We can increase our understanding of ourselves and the world around us by learning about what colors can mean or represent. Listen and practice. My birthday is July 14th, and I always celebrate my birthday with my friends and family. I'm 16 years old now, and on my last birthday, my parents gave me a sweet 16 party. That's a party a lot of girls have when they turn 16. I made a guest list, and my parents sent the invitations. My mom and I decorated the room and planned a special menu of pizza, ice cream, and, of course, cake. My mom baked a big chocolate cake with Happy Birthday Amanda on it. Everybody sang Happy Birthday to me. We had the party at my house, and 14 of my friends came. My mom and dad gave me a cool gift. It was a new camera. It was great. I took photos of my friends and then posted them online for my friends to see. I'm not going to have a party for my next birthday, my 17th, but I am going to have one for my 18th birthday. Listen and practice. What is a desert? A desert is a dry place that has less than 25 centimeters of rain every year. Some deserts have no rain for months or years. Some deserts have sand, but others have stones or rocks. Some deserts are in the mountains. In the day, temperatures in hot deserts are usually from 20 to 35 degrees centigrade. but Temperatures can be more than 50 degrees. At night, the air gets very cold. Sometimes it's less than zero degrees. Most cold deserts are warm in summer, but they are very cold in winter. 
In summer, temperatures are usually from 21 to 26 degrees centigrade. In winter, they are usually from 2 to 4 degrees. Most of the water in cold deserts comes from snow or fog. It doesn't come from rain. Listen and practice. Living in the desert. Living in the desert is very different from living in a city, but people still cook, travel, and go to school. Most desert people eat bread, porridge, milk, cheese, and food from desert plants. They cook their food on a fire outside their home. Dates grow well in deserts. Dates with cheese is traditional Tuareg food. Today, many desert people drive SUVs, but camels are better for traveling across sand. Camels can travel more than 40 kilometers in a day. They are strong animals. Desert people can use camels to carry food, tents, and other things from their homes. A long time ago, only a few desert children went to school. But this is changing. In the deserts in Australia, Aborigines are building new schools. Students speak their own language, and they also learn English. Listen and practice. Being polite from culture to culture. Most people want to be polite and behave well around others. Being polite means knowing how to greet and talk to people. It means using good manners when eating. It means knowing how to give and receive gifts appropriately. Polite behavior in one country, however, may be impolite in another part of the world. Travelers need to understand the cultural differences in politeness so that they don't cause embarrassment. For instance, when people meet, they often shake hands. How long should a handshake be? Should you hold the other person's hand gently or firmly? In the United States, people prefer to shake hands firmly for a few seconds. In some Middle Eastern countries, people hold the person's hand gently for a longer time. Handshaking varies around the world. What about eye contact? In some countries, you show respect when you look someone directly in the eye. In other parts of the world, to look at someone directly is rude. To be respectful, a person looks down at the ground. There are also cultural differences in the way people use personal space. When two people are talking, should they stand close together or far apart? Exactly how close should they stand? In North America, for instance, People usually stand about an arm's length apart during a conversation. However, in some countries in the Middle East and Latin America, people stand closer. It can be awkward if one person likes to stand close and the other person likes to stand farther apart. Three authors wrote a book Kiss, bow, or shake hands, 
about cultural differences. In their book, they discuss greetings, gift giving, and time. Around the world, cultures have different ideas about giving gifts. In the United States, if someone gives you a gift, you should open it while they are with you. That way, they can see how happy you are to receive it. In China, you should open a gift after the person is gone. Another cultural difference is time. If someone invites you to dinner at their house at 6 p.m., what time should you get there? Should you arrive early, late, or exactly on time? In Germany, it is important to arrive on time. In Argentina, polite dinner guests usually come 30 to 60 minutes after the time of the invitation. When traveling, remember that each country has a different definition of being on time. A final area to be careful about is body language, including gestures. Is it acceptable to touch a person on the shoulder? How do you wave goodbye or hello? How do you gesture to someone to come here? All of these can be different from one culture to another. In Thailand, it is rude to touch someone on the head with the palm of the hand. The gesture for come here in the U.S. is only used for calling animals in some other countries. If you are going to live, work, or study in another country, it is important to learn the language. But it is also important to learn about cultural differences. This way, you can be polite and make a good impression. People around you will feel comfortable and respected. Politeness and good manners can be good for making friends, good for traveling, and good for business too. Listen and practice. Excellent exercise. Being active is very important, but do you know why? There are many benefits to exercise. It is good for your mind and body in many ways. Exercise makes your body stronger. You need a strong body so you don't get sick easily. Exercise is good for your heart. Your heart pumps blood around your body. The more you exercise, the stronger your heart is. Exercise helps you keep a healthy weight. A healthy weight is important so you don't get sick. Exercise helps your brain work better. When you exercise, more blood goes through your brain. The more blood that goes through your brain, the better your memory gets. Exercise makes you happier. Exercise is a great way to reduce stress. It gives you more energy to do things that make you happy. The more things you do, the better you sleep. Exercise makes you strong, healthy, and happy. And it's fun to exercise. So don't forget to exercise. Listen and practice. A world of friends is a world of peace. And now, a message from the Friendship Force. The Friendship Force says, A world of friends is a world of peace. The Friendship Force is an international friendship organization. Friendship Force groups travel to foreign countries. In the new country, the Friendship Force visitors stay with host families. They learn about their host family's life and culture. 
The visitors and their host families spend a lot of time together, and they become good friends. Every year, Friendship Force visitors make 40,000 new friends in 56 different countries. This is important because when people make international friends, they help to make peace in the world. Are you interested in the Friendship Force? Please go to our website for more information. If you want to travel with the Friendship Force, send us an application so we can learn more about you. And remember, a world of friends is a world of peace. Listen and practice. I enjoy reading. I read a lot of books, and I love going to the library. My dad likes outdoor things. He's really into sports and swimming, and he always tells me I should get more interested in sports. But Mom tells me that reading is the best way to learn. She always gives me books that she's been reading. Listen and practice. I love animals. I keep a couple of parrots in a big cage in my room. I love taking photographs of wild birds when I'm in the countryside. My dad and I often go away for the weekend, and we have a great time bird watching. My sister thinks I'm crazy. When my sister has free time, she loves to play cards. I can't stand card games. Listen and practice. Actually, I don't have big plans for the summer. I'll probably just hang around at home and play video games and sleep a lot. I'm always studying during the school year, and I had a job last summer. So it'll be nice to just relax and take it easy for a change. Listen and practice. I'm going to visit my grandparents this summer. I haven't seen them for a few years, and it'll be great to spend time with them. I'll miss my friends, but I know we'll text all the time as usual. Listen and practice. Well, unfortunately, this summer, I'm going to study for my exams. I'd like to take a vacation, but this is my last summer for studying. My exams are next spring. Next summer, I can have fun. Listen and practice. I'm very interested in computers. I'm always teaching myself new computer programs, and I have a lot of great software. My brother and I spend all our free time in computer stores and online. My sister is more interested in the arts. She likes music, and she loves to read. She hates computers. Listen and practice. I love traveling. My mother and I go to a different place every year. Both of us love to learn new things about cultures. My father never goes with us because he hates flying. My older sister is in college, so she stays home and studies while we're away. Sometimes I wish my sister and my father would travel with us because I miss them. Listen and practice. Accidental inventions.
Sometimes a successful invention happens by accident. The tea bag, for example. Thomas Sullivan introduced tea bags to the world in 1908. He was a New York tea importer. He sent tea to his clients in tin cans, but tin was so heavy and expensive that he needed a more convenient way to send it. So he designed inexpensive bags to hold the tea leaves and sent them instead. Thomas's customers were supposed to open the bags and put the leaves in hot water. Instead, they used the entire bag. But this innovation worked. Immediately, tea bags proved to be a big success. Listen and practice. How embarrassing! This happened at work a few years ago. I was on an elevator and a man got on that I didn't know. He asked, How are you? I answered, Pretty good. Then he asked, What's new? And I said, Nothing much. Finally, he turned and said, Do you mind? He was on his cell phone. I was so embarrassed. Listen and practice. The popularity of social networks. Every morning, Sarah turns on her computer. First, she checks her email. Then, she visits a social networking website to find out what her friends are doing. On this website, she reads news from her friends. For example, she may look at comments her friends made about movies, music, books, and other friends. On her profile page, Sarah writes a short message about what she is doing. Like many young people, Sarah enjoys meeting and communicating with others on social networks. These websites let people see what their friends are doing and thinking. Sarah is part of an important trend in communication. Social networking sites become more and more popular every day, and they are popular all around the world. In Japan, the top site is Mixi. In Europe, it is Bebo. The most popular site in Latin America is Orkut. In the United States, the top site is Facebook. In fact, Facebook is one of the most popular social networking sites in the world. A Harvard University student started Facebook in 2004. And it spread to more than 400 million users in just a few years. Why is the social networking trend spreading so rapidly? One reason that these websites are popular is because people are social. We like to communicate with other people, we make friends with people in school, at work. And online. Most people like to stay closely connected to their friends and family. We use cell phones, email, instant messaging, and websites to learn what our friends are doing. The internet is a good way to socialize and communicate, and social networking sites allow people to do this in many ways. Social networking sites are interactive and personal. People can share photographs of themselves and of others. They can tell people what they are doing at any moment and keep in touch. They can post a link to a site with their favorite song or band. 
They can join groups with others who share their interests. Many people post videos of themselves on sites like YouTube. Other users can comment on these photos and videos. This interaction makes these websites become more popular. Another reason that social networking sites are popular is because the users write what is on the site. In the past, websites only had information for users to read. In this way, websites were like newspapers or television. All of the communication went in only one direction, from the website to the users. In the past, the average person didn't contribute to the websites. Today, the Internet is more interactive than it was in the past. Now, anyone can have their own website, blog, or page on sites like Facebook. Readers are now also writers and can easily add material to the web. People can express their own ideas and they can put their own experiences online. Social networking sites first became popular with college students. At one college, students said they spent almost two hours every day just on Facebook. Teenagers also use these sites to stay connected with their friends. These days, even older people are using social networks. The Internet keeps changing, but one trend is clear. People enjoy using websites that let them connect with others. They like to express themselves and communicate online.